independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And my name is Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. You can jump in at 844-DIG-CHAD and be a part of the show. Let everyone know what you think. 844-DIG-CHAD. You can also be a part of it on Twitter. And Chad loves to engage there. That's at Chad Benson Show. As I say, my name is Greg Knapp, GregoryBnapp.com. For more about me, I have a new podcast out. Go to Apple Podcasts, type in my name, Gregory Knapp. It'll pop right up. It's not about politics. It's about finding your purpose and living your passion. I'd love for you to check that out. So we start with AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, because she is the moral compass of the nation now, because she and she alone can show you the horrors, the torture, the concentration camp-like situations that are going down on our border. Because she went there and talked to some people. She didn't tour the facility, but she went and she yelled at the guards and then said that she felt unsafe because, after all, there's a private, secret Facebook group that a journalist found that had some negative things written about her. Okay, now let's start with that. Okay, first of all, the private Facebook group, it it is inexcusable. This is what happens online. Have you ever seen what people say to each other on Twitter? Have you seen the trolls online? Have you seen people getting in their little groups and how quickly their discussions can devolve into disgusting insults of people in the out group? It happens all the time. It's one of the worst things about the Internet. The anonymity that you get online and the devolution of our civilization and the way we treat each other, it just, it's like a feeding ground for the worst. And so what you've got is you got 9,500 people a part of this group, and it's made up of retired agents and current agents, we're told. But we have no idea if there are other people involved with it. And we have no idea so far exactly who was making the disgusting comments in the Facebook group. Somebody posted a picture of AOC giving oral sex to a migrant. Somebody posted another picture of AOC having her head pushed down towards Donald Trump's crotch. Uh, They said some, some pretty nasty things. Absolutely. And the people who did that, if they're current employees working in these facilities and they they said some negative things and some racial slurs about some of the people that they're trying to help, then those people should be disciplined and or fired, depending on what they wrote and, and where they work. Absolutely. But here's the thing. We don't even know yet exactly who wrote those things. And out of ninety five hundred people, we're talking about three or four things. So let's hold on just a second and tap the brakes before you're like AOC and you're ready to tell everybody that it's a violent culture there, that she feels unsafe, and that women are being forced to drink out of the toilets. Because there's another group of pastors that just toured some facilities and saw something completely different. And they're Hispanic pastors, by the way. So maybe we just ought to slow down a little bit here before we say that all these Border Patrol agents, many of whom are Hispanic, by the way, are simply treating these Hispanic children as if they're trash. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. Because the people who are willing to go do those jobs and work there are actually trying to help these people. So here's some from AOC. Uh, We've got a little bit of her talking to the press as she's leaving disgusted even though she didn't tour the facility she talked to some people and she heard some really bad things so here she is cut one say it again in english please mm-hmm. there's abuse in these facilities there's abuse this was them on their best behavior and they put them in a room with no running water and these women were being told by cbp officers to drink out of the toilet They were drinking water out of the toilet. And that was them knowing a congressional visit was coming. That was, this is CBP on their best behavior, telling people to drink out of the toilet. Did you see somebody actually do that? No, she closed the window. She didn't see that because according to CBP, that's not happening. Now, there's one other person that claimed a woman told her that she was told to drink out of the toilet. Maybe one person told them that. I don't know. 
But what CBP is saying is, whoa, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. The toilet and the sink are connected. And there's a photo of it online if you haven't seen it. It's what we have in many of these uh, government facilities where we're holding people, just like we have in many jails. <gasps> are you comparing this to a jail? We'll get to that in a second. But what it is is it's a big, like, water fountain at the top, and that's a water fountain. That's what you can drink out of. And then down below is a metal toilet, but it's all one unit where you can then use the toilet at the bottom. The whole thing is flushed with potable water. So the guy's like, no, 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 the, the sink's part of the toilet. We didn't say drink out of the toilet. And so now we have kind of tweets going back and forth on whether AOC, whether they were really told to drink out of the toilet or it's connected to the toilet or exactly what was happening. So maybe we ought to just slow down a little bit before we throw all these men and women who are working for us so hard at the border under the bus. Because maybe there's a little bit more to this story, okay? And, and the other part of this, we say, well, why would they get the same thing that are in jail cells? Okay. I want everybody treated humanely who comes into this nation, whether you're in jail or not, whether you're detained or not. But let's also remember this. The people have come across our country illegally. They have broken the law. So we are detaining them, and we're only detaining them long enough to try to process them because we can't hold them more than 20 days if they have children, and we have very limited space, and we're overcrowded, and sometimes things break like a sink. And, and I don't know all the details of what's going on, but I can tell you this. You come in illegally, you're not going to be in the lap of luxury. You're going to be in a detention facility that is similar to a jail. Yes, because you broke the law. Hey, listen, if, if you think these are horrible conditions, you can leave and go back to your home country at any time. We're not holding you here. You can't go anywhere you want in the United States. But if you want to just go back to Mexico or Honduras or Guatemala or El Salvador or... Or now we're finding out Cuba, we're finding out different countries in Africa, we're find I mean, all over the place. You have the right to go back, but listen, it, it's not going to be all roses while you're waiting in the detention facility. Again, no way should you have to drink out of a toilet. I don't know that that really happened. And from everything that I'm reading and hearing from people who actually toured the facilities, and we'll get to more on that in that in a minute, these people who work for us are doing their very best to treat these people as humanely as possible. Nobody is up there trying to treat these people horribly. In fact, one Border Patrol agent was, was telling one of the Hispanic pastors that came, she was crying with how they're being portrayed in the press because she said, we, we care about these children. We're trying to help them. And think about this. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez refused the tour, according to people who worked there and talking to the Washington Examiner. She refused to tour the facility. She's ready to believe the worst about the facility, believe the worst about people who work there, calling our officers every name in the book, comparing them to Nazis in a concentration camp. She voted against any bill to provide more funds to help the situation. She, she voted against the Nancy Pelosi bill, let alone the Mitch McConnell bill that came through the Senate that was bipartisan, 84 to 8 in the Senate, and then passed in the House in a bipartisan way. And she's claiming she's compassionate? So here's what some of the people uh, are saying about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. One witness told Fox News, she comes out screaming at our agents right at the beginning of the tour, crying and screaming and yelling. The agents wanted to respond, but they held back because she's a congressional delegate. But when you have someone yelling at you in a threatening manner, they were like, hey, you need to kind of step back. Well, Ocasio-Cortez tweets out, to these CBP officers saying they felt threatened by me. They were literally discussing making a GoFundMe for an officer who attacked me on my tour. Um, what I saw was, according to that ProPublica thing, after she compared these detention facilities to Nazi concentration camps, there were people in the Facebook group who said we should start a GoFundMe for somebody who would throw a burrito at her. Now, that's not the right thing to say. 
But that's not the same thing as starting a GoFundMe for somebody attacking me because, hey, I thought it was the Democrats and the people on the left that think there's nothing wrong with milkshaking someone, right? I mean, if you don't like what they're saying and they're horrible people, you should just throw a milkshake at them. So they're saying, why not throw a burrito at you? Now, I don't like either one of them, but you guys are pushing the milkshaking and think that there's no problem with it. She continued, they confiscated my phone. No, no one's allowed to bring the phone in. And they were they were all armed. I'm 5'4". They're just upset I exposed their inhumane behavior. Maybe they think, hey, she's from Congress, and she could probably make our life a living hell. The examiner said Ocasio-Cortez refused to tour the facility, choosing to stay with a family in a holding area instead. She had previously tweeted about her visit to border facilities, writing that people of all ages were being mistreated and were drinking out of toilets as the guards laughed. I find that extremely difficult to believe. In fact, I don't believe it. I don't believe her. And I'll tell you one of the reasons I don't believe her. This one, Hispanic pastors tour the border facility that AOC criticized and say they're shocked by the misinformation. Reverend Samuel Rodriguez said when he saw these reports, he was really ticked. He was full of indignation, and he heard how horrible the conditions were down there, and he had to go see for himself, so he took a group of pastors with him. He's the president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference. That's the largest Hispanic Christian organization in the world. He's the senior pastor of New Seasons Christian Worship Church in Sacramento. Here's what he said after he toured it with the other Hispanic pastors. Quote, I read the report, saw the news clips. I just wanted to see what was actually happening in order to better enable our efforts to find a fair and a just solution to our broken immigration system. To my surprise, I saw something drastically different from the stories I've been hearing in our national discourse. Even as a veteran of immigration advocacy in the U.S., I was shocked at the misinformation of the crisis at the border. We found no soiled diapers, no deplorable conditions, no lack of basic necessities. And he said, I specifically asked the border agents, are you guys staging this? Are you just trying to respond to this bad press? And they unequivocally denied it, said, you're witnessing the identical conditions the attorney saw when they toured the facility just days before. And some told him that the sources from whom he got the negative coverage, where that all originated, quote, never toured the areas of the facility that we toured and speculated they might have had political motivations. No. Really? They're suing over it. Yeah, they got political motivations. And so what we're going on is hearsay from the lawyers and people like AOC and eyewitness reports by these pastors that actually toured it. And the the pastor said they left encouraged by the commitment and dedication of our Border Patrol and immigration officers. Pastor said many of them are Latino, by the way. And he said one emotional Border Patrol agent turned turned to him and said, Pastor Sam, what they're saying about us is completely false. We care about these kids. And have a passion for our calling. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's more to this story than you're hearing in the news and from AOC. Got a little bit more on that for you in just a second. Uh, We now have reports that Mexico is admitting that some people are trying to buy children to cross the border. I'm not making it up. You got to hear it. Hang on. 844 Dig Chad gets you in. My name's Greg Knapp in for Chad Benson on the Chad Benson Show. Get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. My name is Greg Knapp, in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. 844-DIG-CHAD gets you on board. 844-DIG-CHAD. We're talking about what's going on at the border. Big story. AOC goes down there and she claims that they're telling women to drink out of toilets. Let's let's see you cut one one more time. There's abuse. There's abuse. This was done on their best behavior. And they put them in a room with no running water. And these women were being told by CBP officers to drink out of the toilet. 
They were drinking water out of the toilet. And that was them knowing a congressional visit was coming. That was, this is CBP on their best behavior, telling people to drink out of the toilet. Did you see somebody actually do that? Sorry, you know? She drove away because she didn't see it. It's all hearsay. And according to CBP, um, there are sinks attached to the toilet that deliver safe drinking water, and it's all potable water. And I, they're, they're saying we don't tell people to drink out of the toilet. I, I don't think I can believe this woman. There's this Facebook group for current and former Border Patrol agents, and yes, it did erupt with anger after AOC compared the border facilities to Nazi concentration camps. And so here is Brian Hastings, Deputy Chief of Operations for U.S. Border Patrol. Cut three, please, on his response to what was in the Facebook group and what AOC said. Here we go. We're professionals. Um, We're dealing with a crisis right now. Over 680,000 apprehensions so far this year. Uh, Agents are under a great deal of stress. But with that, um, you know, what I would remind the public is how many rescues the men and women of Border Patrol have done and put their life on the line to save various individuals throughout the year. No, no, no. They're all horrible, awful, evil people. They're like Nazis. They just want people to drink out of toilets. I told you about the Hispanic pastors tour that said they found the exact opposite there. Oh, but this is the one I was going to get to. The Daily Wire has a little piece on it. The Seattle Times writing about it. The New York Times. The Mexico now, Mexican officials are now admitting that there are people trying to buy children in order to come to the United States of America. Well, I mean, why would they think that would work? Oh, I don't know, because that's everything you see in the news, that if you have a child with you, you won't be turned away, that if you have a child with you, it's a get-out-of-jail-free card, because you come in with a kid, and they can only hold you for 20 days, and then they're going to have to release you. So, hey, make sure you come across with a kid and claim asylum, because even if you really don't qualify for asylum, we're so overwhelmed, it could take months for your court date to come up. And, hey, if you don't show up for the court date, who cares? Because we're not going to come get you anyway, so you're in. So the Democrats, the media, and the left, but I repeat myself, are incentivizing this idea of bringing a child and even buying one. Details on that in just a second. My name's Greg Knapp, in for Chad Benson on the Chad Benson Show. I want to show them how gorgeous she looks. She only wants to show me how good she could. She's the Chad Benson Show. Got all the right, it's stunning. Fit makes me right, it's I want to love her. She's got all the right, it's Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And my name's Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. You can jump in at 844-DIG-CHAD. 844-DIG-CHAD. Tell everybody what you think. Twitter, follow Chad at Chad Benson Show. You can interact with him there as well. My name is Greg Knapp, GregoryBnapp.com. Gregory B is in boy, K-N-A-P-P.com. My new podcast, Find Your Purpose, Live Your Passion, is up now on Apple Podcasts. Just type in Gregory Knapp there. It'll take you right to it. We'd love for you to listen and leave a review and subscribe. So we're talking about what's going on. Oh, that's not about politics at all, by the way. All right, so here we are talking about what's going on with the illegal alien situation. AOC down there saying how awful we all are. And then we get this. Um, Jazz Shaw has a good piece on this, quoting from the Daily Wire, Seattle Times, New York Times. Mexican officials have admitted that there are people trying to buy children to cross from Mexico into the United States. Verifying claims by U.S. border authorities that some illegal aliens are using children who aren't theirs to try to enter the United States. Mexican authorities have come forward to assert that illegal aliens Immigrants in Tijuana are preying on vulnerable single mothers in shelters by suggesting they sell their children to them. Now, they're saying that we haven't seen anybody doing it yet, but, you know, well, we have been catching people coming across with children who aren't their own, though. New York Times, between September 16, August 17, 46 cases of family claims where the children were not actually children of the people claiming to be their parents. Then you go just five months from September 2018 to the end of January 2019, 191 cases 
of children who were not with their parents. The people claim to be the parents, they weren't. That's a 315% increase because we are incentivizing it. Because when you let people know, if you bring a child, we will not be able to hold you, and you will be released into the United States of America, and yeah, you'll have a court date, but if you don't come back, who cares, because we're not going to do anything about it anyway, you're going to get more of it. And now we're incentivizing people to sell their children, and I'm sure that's Trump's fault. Yeah, I mean, if it was just open borders, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. Just uh, But the Democrats claim they don't want open borders because they're lying to you. This is a crisis this is out of control. And, and and here's the thing that I've said for a long time, and, and when you say this, people call you all kinds of names. How do you know that the people coming across with these children, how do you know that, that they're really their children? Well, of course they are. Nobody would lie about that. Well, we've already caught hundreds who have been lying about it. And my point is, if, if you're bringing small children and you're threatening them, they're not going to tell on you. They're not going to say, this isn't really my dad. This isn't really my mom. I mean, we don't know what they're being threatened with. Are they being threatened with death? Are they are they being threatened that their parents will be killed back in whatever country they came from? We have no idea. The only way you can really tell if they're really their kids is the DNA test. That's it. Really? Well, I just can't. So you just don't believe any of them? What I'm saying is, how do you tell? And we are incentivizing this extremely dangerous situation where you're bringing little children across thousands of miles of what? Desert. Gangs. Human smugglers and traffickers. Robbers. Rapists. We know all of this is going on because we see the reports of... of of these women being raped on their way to Mexico and then on their way to America, of people literally being killed on the passageway. We know that people are robbed sometimes multiple times before they finally make it into the United States, and somehow it's our fault that our facilities aren't Holiday Inns. Oh, Greg, it's not just they're not Holiday Inns. They're drinking out of the toilet. I don't believe that. I just don't believe it. And by the way, I love how uh, Josh Shaw points this out. That border bill that Nancy Pelosi pushed, that the Democrats passed in the House, but thankfully the Senate didn't approve it, that bill that Nancy Pelosi wanted had a provision in it, and it said that the U.S. government would be mandated to broadcast the information about our child accompaniment policy outside of the United States. So the people who were thinking about asylum would be made aware of it. So think think about that. So we, if Nancy had had her way, we would be spending U.S. taxpayer dollars to tell people in foreign countries, hey, if you come to America with a child, we have to let you in, and then we have to let you stay in the United States, and we can't hold you for more than 20 days. That would have been required in her bill. Are, are, are you kidding me? No. But remember— Nancy Pelosi is one of the people that told you this wasn't a crisis. Oh, oh, you know, yeah, we I, we can't let this go. Great, great little bit here at Washington Free Beacon. They put together a little uh, montage of cuts of the Democrats telling you there was no crisis. This is not a crisis. This is a fake crisis. Trump is manufacturing this crisis. There's no such thing. We had top Democrats, several presidential candidates over the past year saying this was totally made up and there is no crisis at all. Nancy Pelosi, Democrat, California, Senate Minority Leader, Chuck Schumer, Democrat, New York. There is no crisis at the border, says Steny Hoyer, Democrat, Maryland. That was in February. So listen to all these different people. Democratic National Committee Chairman Tom Perez said it was a made up crisis. Representative Debbie Powell, Democrat, Florida, said it was a crisis that does not exist at the border. Representative Jim Himes, Democrat, Connecticut, fake crisis doesn't exist. Presidential candidates? Yeah. Senator Sanders, Senator Harris, Senator Warren, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, former Obama official Julian Castro, former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke, all, all said there was no crisis. It was made up by Trump. Okay? Let's hear a little bit of that. Uh, Cut six, please. The president has said that there is somehow this crisis at the border. That's a lie. 
That couldn't be further from the truth. We have a president of the United States who has created a Campbell fiction Harris. about a crisis at the border. This president just used the Schumer. backdrop of the Oval Office to manufacture a crisis. So I'm expecting a declaration of a national emergency around a fake crisis that doesn't exist. This made-up crisis at the border. Holding the American people hostage might stop manufacturing a crisis. There is no crisis at the border. There, there is no crisis in arrivals. We are focusing on a crisis that does not exist at the border. And Trump, you shut down the government over a fake crisis at the border. So those are all Democrats. Pelosi, Schumer, uh, Julian Castro, Kamala Harris. No, 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 no crisis whatsoever. And then we had CNN finally noticing maybe there was a crisis. Don Lemon setting it up, cut seven. For anybody who doesn't think immigration is a crisis, a deadly serious crisis, a humanitarian crisis, I got to show you this picture. We have never not said that there was a crisis. There is a humanitarian crisis crisis at the border oh oh see so nancy pelosi now tell you, oh we've never said there's not a crisis i mean there's a humanitarian crisis at the border but they don't think it's a problem for america do they really think that's a winning message for these presidential elections i mean it might be for the primary on the democratic side because they've gone totally off the left deep end never go full lefty hey remember that movie tropic thunder you ever seen that movie tropic thunder Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr. Well, in the movie, Ben Stiller played a mentally handicapped, special needs kid in 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 another movie. He was an actor in the movie, an actor in the in you know, so a movie inside a movie kind of thing. And he didn't do well. the The movie didn't do well. And so Robert Downey Jr.'s character is talking to Ben Stiller's character and said, "The problem is you went full," and he used the word. I'll just use it to let you know he used the word retard, which, of course, we don't like to use. Don't use the R word. So he said, you never go full R. So you can go a little bit. You can go halfway. You never go full R. Because when you go full R, then the audience feels all weird, and it just won't do well, and you won't do good in the movie, right? That was a little scene. And it's the same thing for leftist socialist like the Democrats. You can't ever go full lefty. Never go full lefty. Because, um, thank God, America still doesn't want to go full lefty. But that's what they're doing to try to win this primary. That's what they're doing. And and the, these unintended consequences are popping up. I mean, really, we could do a whole show on that. Yesterday, we talked about unintended consequences with designer babies. Today, now we got unintended consequences of, of saying, hey, we can't separate children and families, of course. So what happens? Well, you bring your children. That way they can't separate you. That, that way they let you stay forever. Maybe it's not an unintended consequence for the Democrats. Maybe that's exactly what they wanted. And then and then, you know, you, you keep looking at at unintended consequences. How about how about in L.A.? Oh, oh we're just going to help the homeless. Right. And, and everything they're doing isn't helping them. It's actually making it worse. And it's bringing more homeless to them and exacerbating the problem. And now L.A. is full of trash and rats and diseases that we thought we had eradicated from the United States. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Dr. Drew has been predicting typhus and even plague to return to L.A. because of the heinous conditions, the horrendous conditions. We're talking about what's going on on the border. You need to talk about what's going on in L.A. The streets of L.A. are like the third world now. And it's the unintended consequences of supposedly being compassionate for the homeless. It's not compassionate when you don't help them. It's not compassionate to enable a homeless person to stay on his drugs, to stay on his alcohol, to stay homeless by just giving him free stuff. That is not compassion. Because you're hurting them. You're not helping them. Compassion is helping them get back on their own feet. And sometimes that takes tough love. That's why places like the Salvation Army do it right. They say, look, we want to help you, but you got to get off the substances first. We'll help you do that, but you have to agree to do it. And then you have to agree that you're going to work with us to get you a job because you've got to get back up on your feet so you can take care of yourself. Otherwise, we're not going to help you because otherwise all we're doing is enabling you to continue this horrible pattern of behavior that is leading to a horrible life for you. But the Democrats will say that's mean. Wow. Wow. All right. Uh, I, I, there's so much more we can get to, and I'm going to hit this illegal immigration thing again at the top of the last hour of the show. 
But I also want to get you some other stuff like Mayor de Blasio running for president. Wait till you hear what he says Medicare for all should pay for. All right. And a good and bad story about those package thieves that steal stuff off your porch. All that coming up in just a second. My name is Greg Knapp. 844-DIG-CHAD. Get you on the program. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. need to fear. We promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry Russia, Russia, Russia. Pui to fearless leader. Pui. Pui, pui, and double pui. Boy, it's your language. This is a family show, remember? Pui to family too. Nostrovia. This is Chad Benson. And my name's Greg Knapp. In for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. You can go to thechadshow.com, 844-DIG-CHAD. And of course, on Twitter, it's at Chad Benson Show. So New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is polling less than 1%. Don't feel bad, though. Out of the top 20 who were in the debates last week for the Democratic presidential nomination, 10 of them, according to CNN, are polling at less than 1%. And there was another poll I saw that 13 of them are polling at 1% or less. So de Blasio is one of the many that are trying to get some traction, trying to get people to pay attention. The problem is even... The majority of New York City people say they don't want de Blasio to even be the mayor anymore. I don't know how that's going to work. But he was asked, should Medicare for all cover gender reassignment surgery? I bet you can guess the answer. Because remember now, how fast and how far to the left can you run in order to try to get some traction in the Democratic primary cycle? Should Medicare for all cover gender reassignment surgeries? That means you would pay for it. Here's New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, cut eight. Plan for uh, Medicare for all would include gender confirmation or reassignment surgeries? Absolutely. We have to respect everyone's medical needs. And if someone needs a surgery to be full and to live their life fully, the idea is a healthcare system that actually serves everyone to the fullest not a healthcare system that rations and causes people to struggle to get just a little healthcare. Wow, so many problems in such a short answer. So let's take them one at a time. Okay, we have to respect everyone's medical needs. Let's start there. The idea that you need sex reassignment surgery, according to whom? According to you and how you feel. I said, Greg, you don't understand. You never felt that way. You're right. I have great compassion for people who feel like they're in the wrong body. I can't even imagine if I was how I am and I felt like a woman, I can't imagine what that would feel like. And I feel horrible for them. But guess what? When we're talking about under the age of 18, people who feel like they're the opposite gender, the studies from John Hopkins shows 80% of those children re-identify with their biological gender without any treatment at all. 80%. Okay, so now we're down to 20%, the the last 20%. And unfortunately, what Johns Hopkins found was they had an increase in suicide rates after the surgeries, not a decrease. That's not good. And they had people regretting the surgery I'm sorry, I don't have that exact percentage in front of me right now. That's certainly not good because you can't reverse these. So what we're doing is we're saying we're going to go with something that is totally unproven to actually make the person's life better and hacking off perfectly good human body parts and drugging them up with all kinds of drugs because they feel a certain way. Is that really the best medical solution? And I'll put it to you this way. Somebody comes to you and says, I'm just too fat, and they weigh 110 pounds. Do you say, you're right, you're fat, keep dieting? Or do you say, hey, maybe we need to work with this person and figure out why their brain tells them they're fat when they're not, they're skinny. There's a mental health illness, body dysmorphia, I think it's called, where you actually believe that one of your good body parts should be amputated. 
Like, Doc, this left hand has got to go. There's just It shouldn't be attached to my body. I don't think it's mine. It doesn't feel like my hand. I've got to get rid of this left hand. We don't say, well, that's necessary surgery. Let's cut off your perfectly good left hand. We work with that person and say, what is it in their mind that's making them believe that this left hand isn't theirs and shouldn't be on their hand, shouldn't be on their arm? So why do we treat this so much differently? Because it has become a political third rail. Because it's politically correct to say, however you feel on this, you're right. Is that really serving the best interests of the patient? Is that really serving the best interests of people who feel like they're the opposite gender? And then he gets to, de Blasio gets this whole thing about not a healthcare system that rations. Medicare for all will ration. There's not enough money to provide all the care that people want. Private health insurance rations, and there's more money in that. Government-run health cares all around the world ration care with waiting lists and by denying certain drugs and certain procedures. To act like that it won't because it's Medicare for all is sheer nonsense, and they're lying to you again, just like they did with Obamacare. My name is Greg Knapp, and for Chad Benson on The Chad Benson Show. This is The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And my name is Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad. You can join in at, well, 844-DIG-CHAD. That's the best place to do it because you can tell everybody else exactly what you are thinking. And you can also go to Twitter and follow Chad at Chad Benson Show. Lots of ways to be a part of the broadcast. I've got to start on what's going on with Nike. I'm sure you've seen this today because it's all over the place. And let me give the microphone just right there. We go. And we've got Nike now being run by Colin Kaepernick. I mean, seriously, you've got to think about this. Nike has a new shoe out. They were going to release it. For the 4th of July. It was already sent to the retailers. It's a Air Max 1 USA celebration of our nation's independence. On the back of it is the American flag. And Colin Kaepernick said no. Well, you know, I mean, whatever Colin Kaepernick says is right. I mean, you know, he's the guy that wears socks that have police officers cartoon character as pigs he's the guy that kneels during the national anthem and not because of course you know he doesn't respect the military or our nation just because he thinks that this nation is racist isn't that saying you don't respect the nation or no no that's totally different and of course it's right after the public address announcer says in honor of our nation please rise in honor of our nation and our military please rise yeah but it's not about our military or our national don't you think he has the right to First Amendment to be able to say what he wants? Of course he does. Of course he does. Absolutely. All I ever said about the whole NFL thing is you're at work. And when you're at work, you don't have the right to do whatever you want and not expect a repercussion. Look, if you're at work and all of a sudden you decide to launch a political protest during work, you think your boss is going to be fine with it? Of course not. He's going to fire your butt. Unless you stop and get back to work, because that's, of course, why you were actually on the job. So that's the whole other story. So now we get to here where Colin Kaepernick calls up Nike and says, hey, listen, guys, that flag on the back of the shoe that you got, it's the Betsy Ross flag, isn't it? It's the one from the 13 original colonies, isn't it? Yeah, we thought that'd be really cool because, you know, it's kind of retro look. You know, everything's retro now. It's kind of no, 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 no. See that? That has some connotations to slavery. It's offensive to us. What? That's Wall Street Journal reporting today. Yep. Called up and said, 
Uh, it's offensive symbol. It's connected to an era of slavery. So Nike goes, oh, we're sorry, Mr. Kaepernick. Absolutely, Mr. Kaepernick. We'll recall the shoe, Mr. Kaepernick. After shipping the shoes to retailers, Nike asked them to be returned without explaining why. Well, now we're learning why. Some of them got out, though. Well, those shoes are going to be worth a lot now, aren't they? Some, If I'm working at Nike, I'm grabbing like 10 pairs and selling them on eBay, man, because these are going to go up in value big time. Already, one pair has, has gotten $2,000 online. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's the whole ploy of this whole thing. Here's here's what I'm thinking. Somebody's got to tell Colin Kaepernick, you are not the center of the universe. Everything is not about you. This shoe has nothing to do with you. Secondly, everything is not racist. Colin Kaepernick and so many on the left are going through their life with race-colored glasses on. Everything's about racism. I remember one time Chris Rock talked about the fact that his mom went to the Cracker Barrel I thought that was the joke at first, but no, he said his mom went to the Cracker Barrel and she got seated after a white party that got there after her. And that showed that Cracker Barrel was racist. And I'm thinking to myself, self, how many times have you been to a restaurant and you got there before other people and the other people were seated before you? I could think of at least 10 times that's happened in my life, but never once did I say because of my race, because I'm not allowed to say that. Now, maybe, maybe the Cracker Barrel people were racist, but maybe the Cracker Barrel people made a mistake. Is that a possibility? No, no, it has to be this because everything is this. Everything is not racist. The Betsy Ross flag the 13 original colony flag was made while we were fighting for our independence from England. Slavery had been going on while we were a colony of England. The flag is not about slavery. The flag is about starting a new nation. Because by going by Colin Kaepernick's reasoning, then anything in this nation until the day slavery ended, we should never talk about again and never have on any article of clothing again. Anything doesn't doesn't matter whether it had anything to do with slavery or not. Nope, because it was in that era. So therefore, we got to get rid of all of our money, new people on all the money, because, you know, we've got people on the money that were slave owners or that at least were around during slave times, even if they weren't slave owners. It's crazy. By the way, people say, well, you know, uh, well, you shouldn't put that flag on there because there are people who think that flag's offensive. Guess what? Kaepernick thinks the current flag is offensive. Well, I think Kaepernick is offensive. Why is it why is it that we can't say that he's offensive? If we say that, well, you you just don't believe that he has a right to speak? No, I said he has every right to speak. <coughs> Excuse me, and I have every right to say that I think what he says is stupid. What you're saying is, I don't have the right to say that. I'm so tired of people being offended and acting like that means that they can shut you up. So tired of people being offended and acting like that's the right to shut down a business. Who told you you have a right not to be offended? And you get to choose what's offensive and what isn't. We're allowing the far left celebrities, the Democrats, the media, but I repeat myself, to be the arbiters of what is offensive. Because they're shouting the loudest and they're willing to boycott the most. And therefore, they can shut you up because you're afraid you're going to lose your business. You're afraid that you're going to be called every name in the book and nobody's going to want to be around you anymore. And so you just shut up. And that's why the polls are so wrong about who's going to vote for Trump and why they didn't get it right last time. Because even though you shut up because you're a little nervous about people calling you names, you're not changing what you really think because you know you're right. (laughs) And that's what's going to happen again. So. Now there's this little piece in, I think it was Fox where I saw this, that that some are saying that there are white supremacist groups who are now using the Betsy Ross flag. 
So that means you can never use the Betsy Ross flag again because some idiots, a small minority group, probably less than 0.1% of Americans, are starting to use the original 13 colony flag, the Betsy Ross flag, as a symbol of their hate. That means we can never use it again? No, you don't get the right to grab that flag. That flag's America's flag. I'm not letting you do that. It's a great flag. Well, here's the other side of it. Now, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey, Republican, has come out and said, you know what, Nike? If you're going to turn your back on the original American flag, then Arizona is going to turn its back on you and some of the incentives that we had to bring you to Arizona were taken away. Governor said he's withdrawing financial incentives the state had promised Nike to open a plant. Quote, words cannot express my disappointment at this terrible decision. I'm embarrassed for Nike. Spokesman for the government did not specify how many funds were at stake here. Nike representative wasn't immediately available to the Wall Street Journal. But Nike said Nike has chosen not to release the Air Max One Quick Strike 4th of July as it featured the old version of the American flag. Now, Nike plans to invest $185 million to open a facility in Goodyear, Arizona. It would employ about 500 people. The city council in Goodyear approved a package that would reimburse the company about a million dollars in planning fees and about 4000 per full-time employee that Nike would hire. But Governor Ducey said, instead of celebrating American history the week of our nation's independence, Nike has apparently decided that Betsy Ross is unworthy and has bowed to the current onslaught of political correctness and historical revisionism. Absolutely right. But here's the thing. I, this is not good for our nation. We talked about this the other day, didn't we? Where the far left Twitterverse has an outsized impact on our nation. All you got to do is get two, three, four thousand people bombarding Twitter and people cave. You get 4,000 people going after the state of Georgia and the state of Georgia will cave or 4,000 people bombarding Nike and maybe Nike will cave or whatever it is. So we've got people trying to boycott Georgia over one of their abortion laws. And now people going after Nike because of what they did with Colin Kaepernick and, and Arizona going after Nike because of that. And on and on and on we go. How does that really help our economy? How does that really allow people just to live their lives? Well, Greg, I have a right to boycott if I want to. You do. You have a right to boycott. You absolutely do. And you have a right to say that you hate this place and you want everybody to boycott with you. You have a right to. I'm just saying, is this the best thing for our nation? I really don't think a mob, a Twitter mob, and a social media mob should have the right to tear apart an individual in his business. And these small businesses and even large businesses are petrified. I mean, even in talk radio, you know, you get a couple people trying to start a Twitter mob and, hey, you know, let, let's stay away from that topic, okay? Let's, let's not talk about that topic anymore. Why? Well, the people said you said this, this, and this. That's not what I said. Go listen to the segment. Well, I did, and you're right. That's not what you said, but they're saying you said it, and they're saying it loud on Twitter, and they're getting a lot of people to say that you're a horrible, awful, evil person, so therefore just don't talk about that anymore. Really? Yep, that's what's happening. It's happening all across just about every place you look in America. And I'm asking you, is that good? Is that right? Look, I don't like corporate welfare, so I, I don't even know all the details of what happened in Arizona, so that's probably good that they're not going to give the money to Nike. But I'm just saying the way we're going, where we're, the reason Nike caved on this is they're afraid that Colin Kaepernick would unleash his followers on Nike and make it look like Nike's not woke enough. So they had to cave on a shoe they already made that has absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. What do you think? 844-DIG-CHAT gets you on board the program. 844-DIG-CHAT. You know, I, I, this, this reminded me of something I saw in a movie. i got to get that for you in just a second. Don't miss this, all right? My name's Greg Knapp. In for Chad Benson on The Chad Benson Show. Take 
a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. And my name's Greg Knapp, in for Chad. How you doing? 844 Dig Chad gets you in. So we're talking about Colin Kaepernick here. He calls up Nike. Hey, I saw that new shoe you have out for the 4th of July. I don't like it. What do you mean you don't like it? Well, it's got that American flag on the back. Yeah, it's 4th of July. Well, it's the Betsy Ross flag. See, that flag was flying when we had slaves. So I want it off. Oh, we'll pull the shoe back, Mr. Kaepernick. Dude, everything is not about you. Everything is not racist. Everything is not about slavery. The flag was the first flag of the United States of America. It's July 4th. It has nothing to do with you and slavery and racism. But Colin Kaepernick sees a racist behind every bush. And it reminded me, you ever seen the movie Bowfinger? Not a very good movie. It's okay. It's got Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy. Thought it would be funnier, but it's not. But Eddie Murphy is playing this character. Supposed to be one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. And he's ticked off he's not getting the best scripts. And he thinks everybody's out to get him because he's a black man in Hollywood. And so here he is talking to a script writer about a special script and how he knows there's some racism going on. Cut nine, please. Look at this. Just for fun, I scanned into the computer the script to see how many times the letter K appears in the script. The letter K appears in this script 1,456 times. That's perfectly divisible by three. So what? So, so what you saying? What am I saying? That's his buddy. K, what are you K, saying? K, K appears in this script 486 times. Wait, what? Everybody's like, what? K, 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 what? Kid. It's deep. The sickness is deep. You know what I'm saying? They playing. I've been playing. That's really not the case here. This is a great script. Look, it's not Shakespeare, but hey, it's... what'd you just say? I said, it's not Shakespeare, but it's not it's, Shake. It's not Shake. Did you hear what he? Did you hear what he's doing? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's doing something. I just can't put my finger on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W- what's he doing? Shakespeare, Freddie Shakespeare. 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 Shake a spear. Spear chucker. Shake a spear. Shake, Shakespeare. Oh, I'm a spear chucker now. Kid. Oh, I'm a spear chucker. You come to my house, call me a spear chucker. Huh? Kid, that's not what it means. Oh, it's my imagination, huh? It's all my imagination. Oh, I was so getting I suppose gunning. they didn't put a computer chip in the toy Jackson brain. She just act like that, huh? And I suppose Teddy Kennedy ain't one sixteenth black, huh? Teddy Kennedy. He's not like the other Kennedys. Look at him. He's different. Listen, I, I, I get some calls. Yeah, go to the office and make some calls. Go call Honolulu and Sly and Van Dam and Jackie Chan and tell the spear chucker said hello. So that's Eddie Murphy's character just maybe going a little bit over the top on the idea that everything's about race. Shakespeare means shake a spear, so he's calling him Spear Chucker. Oh, boy. That was comedy. That was comedy. Eddie Murphy's character, they're trying to say, yeah, there's some people that tend to think that everything's about race, and it was comedy. I wonder if you could even make that now. Because that's what Colin Kaepernick is. That's what so many people on the far left are right now, that they think everything is race. Greg, are you saying there's no racist anymore? No, but it sure is a lot better than it was 10 years ago and a lot better than it was 20 years ago and much better than it was 50 years ago and certainly better than it was 100 years ago. But does that mean that you can't show the Betsy Ross flag? These people are insane. I mean, literally insane with rage and victimhood. And it's not helping. And it it brings me up to this next story. Gallup does a poll every year. On American pride. And American pride has hit a new low. Pride in the United States has hit its lowest point since Gallup first started measuring it in 2001. 70% of U.S. adults still say they're proud to be Americans. But fewer than half are extremely proud. 45%. And, And I think it's interesting to look at some of the details in this Gallup poll about who's proud of America and who isn't and why. And I bet I can give you some guesses on which groups are prouder than others. Well, it's because of that Trump in the office. Well, to some degree. I'll get you more on that in just a second. And then what's going on with L.A. and its trash and maybe the plague. Greg Knapp in for Chad Benson on the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And my name's Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. You can join in as well at 844-DIG-CHAD. 844-DIG-CHAD gets you on. And you can go online to thechadshow.com. Lots of ways to be a part of it. So we're talking about this new Gallup survey on are you proud to be an American or not? And they're saying it's at the lowest level ever. The latest overall declines are largely driven by Democrats, according to Gallup. Are you questioning my patriotism? No, I'm just telling you what what Democrats are saying. According to Gallup, they're less proud of America than Republicans are. Their self-reported pride has historically been lower than Republicans and has fluctuated more than Republicans. So right now, the Democrats, only 22 percent are extremely proud of America. That's the lowest in the 19 years Gallup has been measuring it. Half of what it was several months before Donald Trump won. He didn't really win. The Russians won it. Yeah, I know. That's what you think over there on the Democratic side. Most Republicans have remained extremely proud of their country even when Barack Obama was in office. Isn't that interesting? And and this is the problem, unfortunately. It's a huge problem, I think. There is a, a much bigger segment of the far left that really wants to blame America first. They believe the worst about America. They believe the revisionist history taught by far lefty professors. They blame America first no matter what. And they they really think that on the scope of things, on, on the grand scheme of things, it would have been better if America never existed. And you say, really? I mean, it, compared to what? When they say America is horrible, compared to what? Cuba? China? Venezuela? Compared to England, even? I mean, you go back and look at the history of nations. And what we have done, and you put the pro on one side and the con on the other side, I'll take America over anybody. Obviously, there are things that America has done wrong, but I'm super proud to be an American and super proud of this country. What the far left doesn't look at, you got to look at com- comparing things apples to apples. No reality in comparing it to other nations. And and there's no reality in their analysis in the time frame that things happened. Trying to compare what happened 200 years ago morally to what we believe today. No nation can survive that. But that's what they do. And unfortunately, more people on the left do it than the right. And that's just a fact. Here it is from Gallup. I mean, I'm looking at when the years that Barack Obama was in office, the highest that Democrats ever got on being proud to be an American, uh, extremely proud, excuse me, extremely proud to be an American, the highest they ever got was 2013 at 56%. But that was when Obama was in office, right? 2013, 56%. That's the highest they've ever gotten. Republicans, at the same point, during Obama's presidency, they were at 71%, extremely proud to be an American. That fluctuated a little during the Obama years, but it never got below 68%, being extremely proud to be an American on the Republican side. You know why? Because, look, the president does not equal the nation. Our current Congress does not equal the nation. The sum of all the people living in America and everything that this nation has done is what makes America. It's really sad to see people getting this kind of uh, reaction in, in Gallup on whether you're proud or extremely proud of America and different reasons. Now, many people are not very proud of our political system, and I would agree, but tell me which one's better. Tell me a country that has a better one. It's real easy to sit here and look at the problems with our political system and act like ours is the worst ever. But look around the world and see what other people do and how their systems work and actually live there for a while before you really start bashing what's going on here. 
844 dig chad get you on board i listen i'm not saying everything's perfect i know there's problems in america I, there's tons of problems in america but i'm still super proud of what this nation has done what i'm afraid is happening is we're starting to collapse in you know cities like la san francisco denver seattle when you see what's going on with cities especially inner cities that have been run by democrats for decades where they act like they have the solutions and it's just just more taxes more money um give people free drugs because otherwise they're going to die uh yeah get you know give give homeless free spots don't ever let the police tell them they got to move don't don't actually arrest people when they do these problems because really they're just poor and everything will be fine and it's not it's making it worse and now we've got LA, San Francisco, and many other major cities that have areas that are like third world nations. You have used hypodermic needles lining the street, urine, feces. You've got trash everywhere, and you've got rats going crazy. And so diseases are coming back, like typhus. And now we've got in LA, it's gotten so bad that they're having to spend $6.5 million more for homeless cleanup efforts. So they're hiring more trash people, and they're bringing that in. $6.5 million in taxpayer dollars because of how bad the homeless trash has gotten. Now, the activists who are working there say, we don't want the police involved with these garbage sweeps. Of course, the city says, well, we need to use the police. The city sanitation workers say, we need some police with us because sometimes the homeless, they, they really get mad that we're there to clean up. And they start yelling at us and, and start attacking us because they're afraid we're going to take their stuff. Well, the activists say, no, no, no. If the police are here, then some people could be arrested. For what? Well, some of them will have drugs on them. Some of them actually steal stuff for drugs. Some of them have outstanding warrants. So, you know, we don't want them arrested. Well, but wait a second. If they're stealing stuff and they have outstanding warrants, shouldn't they be arrested? Well, no, they're just homeless. No, they're not just homeless. They're... Uh, why don't you care about the homeless? You're a horrible person. Look, my background before I got into radio was mental health counseling. And I've worked with the indigent population for years. There are three types of homeless people. There is somebody who is addicted to substances and therefore just can't get their life going. And we need to help them get off the substances. There are people who are mentally ill. And until we really work with their mental illness, they're not going to be able to take care of themselves. And then there are people who just want to be bums. <gasps> no. Yes, there are. There are people who just don't want to work. They just don't want to live the life that most people do. Now, that's the smallest percentage of the homeless. Most of them are either substance addicted or mentally ill. And we can help them, but we've got to admit that that's the problem and really go for that problem. And then once we get that problem taken care of, we've got to get them to the point where they can hold down a job and stay somewhere without slipping back into their drugs or getting off their mental health drugs and getting back into a horrible mental health state. But we've got to actually address the problem. Instead, we're enabling them. We're saying, oh, you're homeless. Here's free drugs. Oh, you're homeless. Come here for free food and don't worry about everything and just go about your business, whatever you're doing. And then we're expecting somehow magically we're going to sprinkle some magic dust and they're going to take care of themselves and have a job and a place to stay? No. What happens is you get more and more and more, and now we're living under bridges and we're living under overpasses and we're living in people's in people's uh, side yards and, and we're leaving human feces and, and, and urine everywhere and we've got rats and we get to the point, like Dr. Drew is talking about, Dr. Drew lives in L.A. He's been screaming this from the mountaintops, Dr. Drew explaining Hey, you know, if we're not careful, we're going to get the plague back in California. Cut five, please. Hey, Dr. Drew here. And look, I warned the typhus epidemic was coming uh, and nothing has changed since I made that warning. In fact, the rat population has continued to explode. So it is inevitable. I've spoken to experts. It's inevitable that plague follows. It's endemic in this area. It's inevitable. Homelessness is not a housing problem. The housing rhetoric is a hoax. This is a housing hoax. This is a mental health, drug and alcohol addiction problem. And until the politicians begin speaking about it that way, it will never get solved. So please, everybody, hold them accountable. And once we begin talking about expanding labor disabled, getting conservatorship, dealing with the drug and alcohol problem, then we will solve this problem. That's Dr. Drew. So, so far, L.A.'s gotten the measles, typhus, TB, and Dr. Drew's worried you're going to get the plague. And so are many other doctors and experts out there. Uh, Adam, our producer, used to live in L.A. Adam, you were telling me 
just walking around where you used to live. It, it, it was a nightmare dodging the human feces and urine all the time. Well, yeah, I used to, I mean, I was out there just a month or a month ago and I would ride an electric skateboard wherever I go and you couldn't even go a mile down the road without passing. I actually used to count the amount of times that I would smell urine on maybe a one mile ride and it was an average of three times. Man. And like, like we were talking about, these diseases that had virtually been wiped out from North America are coming back. And when you have rats living close to the humans and with all the all the waste and garbage and everything else that's going on, you're going to get diseases and we could we could have a serious outbreak and and people dying from diseases that we haven't seen in generations in this country. It's unintended consequences again of acting like you're compassionate. It is not compassionate to enable a homeless person to continue being homeless and be on drugs or on alcohol or not get help for their mental illness, or not get a job if they can. That is not compassion. That is enabling, and it makes things worse. So now they got to pay $6.5 million more to start cleaning this up, and that's going to be an ongoing charge because th this isn't going away until you get to the root problem. Oh, meanwhile in California, CNBC has a piece out now. California already has super high gas prices, right? They got they got crazy taxes. They've got these special blends of gas that they have to have. At least they say they have to have. And so it costs a ton of money. Now they're adding in another tax, a little bit more to go after the potholes. New 5.6 cents per gallon gasoline tax that just started yesterday. Here's the headline at CNBC. After tax hike, gas in California is now a dollar higher than the national average. Boy, I just don't understand why more people aren't moving to California every day. California's average gas price per gallon bumped up to a nation high $3.75 per gallon. I think I just paid two twenty nine dollars yesterday. Three seventy five dollars per gallon with a new 5.6 cent gas tax increase that just started yesterday. Wow. Oh, well, hey, you know, it's, hey, there's nothing to worry about. I mean... You live there, you have to buy it. That's all, you, you know, what are you going to do? And that money goes for good stuff. Oh, we need those taxes. You just don't care about keeping the city clean. Yeah, I guess you need it to pay for getting all the garbage from the homeless camps that you're allowing to grow because you haven't done anything about it. Great plan. My name is Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad Benson. Uh, all those Democrats that were on the stage last week, well, guess what? They've got to be at 2% for the next debates. Wait till you hear how many aren't even over 1%. I'll get you that and how much money the RNC is raising. And the cops might start using this to see if you're lying to them. My name is Greg Knapp in for Chad Benson on The Chad Benson Show. Don't let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. Hey, how you doing? My name is Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. 844-DIG-CHAD, and you can find out more about me, GregoryBNapp.com. That's my website, and that's Gregory B as in boy, K-N-A-P-P. -P. And my podcast is called Find Your Purpose, Live Your Passion. That's not about politics. It's up at Apple Podcasts right now. I'd love for you to check it out. The Democrats are a little bit upset. I mean, let's just be honest. The Democrat, in terms of the big party, they're starting to get upset because they got 25 people running for president. 20 of them were on stage in the last two debates. And they're thinking, we're going to tear each other apart, and there's going to be nobody left to beat Trump. And, of course, we've got to beat Trump. I mean, that's number one. you got to get rid of Trump. Trump's the worst thing ever in the history of the world. we got to get rid of him. This is the Democrats talking. So we got to do something. we got to get rid of some of these people. There's too many people, and we're going to kill each other before we get to beat Trump. So they're trying to make it harder to get onto the debate stage. So now you got to have at least 2%. percent you got to be polling at at least 2% in order to get on to the next debate. CNN has a poll out today. Likely Democratic voters. And it shows that 10 of these presidential hopefuls are polling at 1% or less. <gasps> More than half of the candidates garnered 1% support or less. 
That includes Julian Castro, Bill de Blasio, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, John Delaney, Kirsten Gillibrand, John Hickenlooper, Jay Inslee, Tim Ryan, Eric Swalwell, and I'm betting right now, even as much as you are dialed into the news, you are a news talk listener, you are dialed in, you are paying attention, I bet you there's at least two or three names there that you went, who? Which one was that? What does he look like? What did she look like? I'm betting at least two or three of those names you were thinking that. I mean, I do this every day, and still a couple of them, I'm like, which one was that again? What you... <laughs> and this is the thing. The, the the Democrat strategists now are coming out and saying these people got to drop out. Listen, man, if you're at 1% or less by now, you got to drop out because we've got to get to the real issues and figure out who's going to be our nominee. And it made me start to think, and I was talking with a friend about this earlier today on a podcast. Why do so many of these people think they can be president? I mean, if you're not nationally known before you run for president, how do you really think you're going to get enough traction for people to know who you are? Extremely difficult to do. And then what makes you think that you're so smart and so charismatic and such a great leader that you and only you alone should be the president of the United States of America? Well, see, the more I talk about it, I'm surprised anybody runs. You've got to be a narcissist just to run, to think that you should be the president of the United States of America, that nobody's better than you. That takes some serious narcissism, if you ask me. But hey, somebody's got to do it, right? And and we've elevated what the presidency is way beyond what the founders wanted. The founders wanted somebody that's just kind of, you know, kind of guiding things, veto if necessary. You know, you're the last guy that's going to sign it, commander in chief, head of the executive branch. But more of the power is supposed to be in the house and that and the speaker of the house because that was what was running the whole engine but it's changed it's shifted it's 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 huge now because it seems like human beings kind of want a king and i know the president's not a king but they kind of want somebody with a lot of power they kind of want that it's really weird to me because i don't want that at all but but it really made me think so why do these people think that they are the people who should be president and my friend was saying well greg they're in a bubble Hey, listen, no matter who you are, once you become a, a politician, you get in a bubble. You've got people telling you how great you are. You've got people who want to give you money. You've got people who want things from you. So you're not just a regular person anymore, and it separates you, and it starts to make you think that you're better than you are. And then you have these yes people telling you everything you say is right. And then you say, you know what, maybe I should run for president. They go, oh, yes, that's a great idea. Oh, yes. And then there are the people who think it's going to help them sell a book. It's going to help them make more money on the speaking tour. It's going to help them be more relevant and make more money, and so that's why they're running. But, yeah, if I'm the Democrat Party, I'm saying they've got to they've got to do something to get these guys out because Trump and the RNC just raised over $100 million, more than Obama had at this time in his first term. You better watch out. Oh, man. My name's Greg Knapp. In for Chad Benson, this is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. And my name is Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. TheChadShow.com, 844-DIG-CHAD, and you're in. And don't forget Twitter, at Chad Benson Show. AOC, back in the news. Okay, we've got to talk about what's going on with the whole illegal alien crisis that's on the border. And yes, it's a crisis. Even the Democrats are admitting it's a crisis now. For a year, they said it was a made-up crisis. Now they're admitting it's a crisis because obviously it is. And so now they're finally paying attention to it. Some of them finally went down to the border. And AOC says that women are being told to drink toilet water. Now, in the Washington Examiner, they talked to some of the Border Patrol people that said she didn't even take a tour of the place. And what she's talking about are these toilets that are actually attached to the drinking fountain. It's all a one-piece unit. They've got photos of it up there. It's what we have in city jails. It's what they have at the detention center. It's not drinking out of toilets. There's a water faucet up top. With It's all potable water. But she's saying, no, no, no. They were told that they had to drink out of a, out of a toilet. And she didn't see this, of course, but she was told this, and therefore it's true. And the Border Patrol is like, what are you talking No, We don't tell people to drink out of the toilet. What are, what are you talking about? 
But this is what she's doing. So she's already called them concentration camps. So comparing us to the Nazis, which means you're comparing the Border Patrol agents to the Nazis, and can't understand why they're just not in love with her. And so she's she's you know finding herself in the spotlight again, as she always seems to do. And cut one is her talking to the press. Here we go. Cut one. Say it again in English, please. Sure. There's abuse in these facilities. There's abuse. This was done on their best behavior, and they put them in a room with no running water. And these women were being told by CBP officers to drink out of the toilet. They were drinking water out of the toilet. And that was them knowing a congressional visit was coming. That was, this is CBP on their best behavior, telling people to drink out of the toilet. Did you see somebody actually do that? Did you like that question at the end? Did you see someone actually do that? And she rolled up her window and drove away. No, she didn't. She, this is all hearsay. Now, I just find it really difficult to believe that our Border Patrol agents are telling people to drink out of toilets. Could it have happened? Maybe. Yeah, it could have. I mean, every once in a while you get somebody who says something horrible like that. You got a lot of agents down there. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of stuff going on. Could have happened. And if it did happen, that person should be disciplined, absolutely. But could it have been maybe a miscommunication? Because the toilet's attached to the water fountain? Could there maybe have been some miscommunication? I mean, you realize that there's a huge percentage of our Border Patrol agents who are Latino. So if you're trying to say it's all racist, that doesn't make sense. And just because you you may not be Latino, you may be a white or a black Border Patrol agent, does that mean that you are going to treat people like that? I can't imagine there's anybody that wants to tell people to drink out of a toilet. I just, I just find it extremely hard to believe. And there, there are a group of Hispanic pastors who went down and toured these facilities and said that it wasn't anything like they've seen in the media. And they can't believe that it was so different in a positive way. We'll get to that. But AOC is just out there painting these people, the Border Patrol agents, in the worst possible light. And painting the place where we're trying to hold them as, as a Nazi concentration camp. Now, I don't want anybody treated inhumanely. I want everybody to have clean water and food and clothing. I want everybody taken care of. And from everything that I've seen, we're trying. It's extremely hard when a facility that was meant for 150 people has 400 people in it. It's extremely hard when we're told by our court system that we can't hold people and we have to release them into the nation and tell them to come back for a court date. And then if they don't come back, oh, well. Because if you try to actually go after them and then deport them, you're trying to separate families again instead of actually just enforcing the law. And and it's having these unintended consequences where Mexico is even admitting now that we have people who are literally trying to buy children in order to come into the country. Because the word has spread now that if you bring a child when you come into the country, then we can't hold you. You're going to be released. I mean, they'll have to process you. We'll hold you a little bit in detention, and then we'll release you. And, you know, we'll give you a court date to come back, but if you don't, there's really nothing going to happen to you. So, hey, if you can get a kid and get in here, you're golden. And so there are people literally trying to buy children. We'll get more into the details of that in a minute, too. But AOC wasn't done. After she said that everybody's being told to drink out of toilets, and she actually said, I've seen the inside of these facilities. It's not just the kids. It's everyone. People drinking out of toilets. Officers laughing in front of members of Congress. Now, think about that for a second. Do you really think that there's a there's a Border Patrol agent laughing while talking about telling somebody to drink out of a toilet in front of a congressperson? Of course not. Could they be laughing at her? Maybe. Could they have been laughing about a joke they told each other and she thought it was about her? Quite possible. Because she has been calling these detention camps concentration camps, which means she is intimating that these officers are like Nazis at Auschwitz. And G can't imagine why these people might not like her. Now, there is a private Facebook group, you know, those you have to be invited into, that's only for current and former Border Patrol agents. 9,500 people in the group. And there are some postings in there that are reprehensible beyond the pale, where they have a picture of AOC and oral sex with a migrant, AOC with her head being pushed towards Donald Trump's crotch. There's no excuse for that. And if that was a current agent, then that current agent should be disciplined and or fired 
depending on all the circumstances that I don't know yet. But we don't even know if a current agent posted those things. We don't even know if a retired agent posted those things because we don't know who did it yet. And we don't even know if there are people beyond current and former agents that are in that Facebook post page, excuse me, because I don't know about you, but just about every place I've worked, there have been some people that shouldn't have been in that job that were not good people. And if you go to some of these private Facebook groups or on some of these Twitter feeds or on some of these Reddit pages or whatever, you're going to see people saying the worst of the worst about a group they either work with or a group they don't like. And so now we're going to paint every Border Patrol agent as the person who wrote a racist comment in this private Facebook group? Yes, this is the violent culture they have, says AOC. So she had a little bit more to say. Let's hear cut two. I mean, in that last facility, I was not safe from the officers in that facility. Do you have any comment about what was posted about you in the alleged Facebook group? I mean, I think it's just a... It's, it's just indicative of, of the violent culture that we saw on the inside. I was not safe in that facility. I mean, could she really mean that? Did she really think that somebody was going to do something to her in the border facility? That's just such a lie. I was not safe. And she talks about they even have a GoFundMe for an agent to attack me. You know what that was about? After, after AOC called these detention facilities concentration camps, some people in the private Facebook group got upset and one guy said, hey, we should do a GoFundMe page for anybody who will throw a burrito at Ale- Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, that's not, that's not a good thing to, to write in the Facebook page. And whoever did that, if they're a current agent, should be disciplined for it. But that makes her unsafe? Oh, wait a second. How is that any different than milkshaking? I mean, that's what the left says you should do to people you disagree with, any politician you disagree with, just go up and milkshake them. In fact, we're going to get get to that in just a minute. Journalist Andy No, who I told you about yesterday, Antifa attacked him in the streets in Portland, attacked him with milkshakes, milkshakes with quick dry cement in them, punched him, kicked him. He ended up with a brain bleed. And there are there are journalists on the left who are, well, not defending Antifa, but saying, can you really blame him? Oh, yeah. They're saying, you know, this is a guy who antagonizes these people, and he wants a result like this. He wants them to attack him, and he wants them to be attacked in front of a real journalist so that he can get this on tape and on TV. This is what he wanted. It's good for him, and it's good for his career. That's what they're actually saying about him being attacked. He was there to film Antifa, and because Antifa didn't like it, they attacked him and broke a lot of his camera equipment and stole some of his camera equipment. And yet, well, you know, he, I mean, I'm not excusing it, but do you see what he does? He antagonizes them. But if somebody says, I don't know, maybe it was even a joke in that private Facebook post, hey, we should do a GoFundMe page for somebody who will throw a burrito at Al- Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, I was not safe in that facility. There are people who are doing a GoFundMe to attack me. Uh, really? Is I mean, are you? She's ready to believe the worst about people who are trying to help a horrible situation. Oh, oh, and that reminds me. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez keeps talking about how horrible this humanitarian situation is at the border. She's doing nothing to help it. She voted against Nancy Pelosi's House plan, she voted <coughs> against Senator Mitch McConnell's plan that eventually passed, that added 4.6 billion dollars to go after this problem. She voted against all of it. She doesn't want any money going to it. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Well, we just need to let them all in and stop this. Nobody should be uh, held in this facility. So AOC just wants open borders. Now, she'll tell you she doesn't because she knows that's a step too far for most Americans, but that's exactly what she wants. So after all these attacks going on our Border Patrol agents, Brian Hastings, uh, Deputy Chief of Operations for U.S. Border Patrol, tried to give a response. Here he is, cut three. We're professionals. Um, We're dealing with a crisis right now. Over 680,000 apprehensions so far this year. Uh, Agents are under a great deal of stress. But with that, um, you know, what I would remind the public is how many rescues the men and women of Border Patrol have done 
and put their life on the line to save various individuals throughout the year. Yeah, they actually want to help people. That's why they got into the job. I'm sure there's some bad apples. There's bad apples in every type of position you can think of. But do you really think that they're running around telling people to drink out of the toilet? By the way, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez didn't even take a tour of the facility. She stayed with one family in one detention cell. And allegedly, according to the Washington Examiner and the people they talked to, screamed at the Customs and Border Patrol agents. She comes out screaming at our agents right at the beginning of the tour, crying and screaming and yelling. The agents wanted to respond, but they held back because she's a congressional delegate. But when you have someone yelling at you in a threatening manner, they were like, hey, you need to kind of step back. And then she didn't do the tour. Didn't do the tour. So how do you know? I mean, how do you even know what really happened? Hearsay. Hearsay evidence. Brian Hastings from the Border Patrol denied the allegations from AOC and said fresh drinking water is provided to people in custody. So he's saying we do not tell people to drink out of the toilet. Who do you believe? Some Hispanic pastors decided they wanted to go down and see for themselves. I'm going to tell you what they found. Then I'm going to tell you about Mexico admitting there are people trying to buy children to come across the border. And we had to shut down a border crossing because of an unruly group forming in Mexico. I'll get you all those details in just a second. My name's Greg Knapp, in for Chad Benson on The Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here, just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. My name is Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on The Chad Benson Show. You can jump in. 844-DIG-CHAD, 844-DIG-CHAD, and you're on board. We're talking about AOC telling us that women are being made to drink water out of toilets. Border Patrol says, no, 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 no. The toilet's connected to the sink, and there's a picture of it, and it's what we have in a lot of the different jails. That's all potable water. Um, That is not happening here. Everybody's getting fresh water. Well, she disagrees. So who do you believe? And then we have Hispanic pastors going down. Reverend Samuel Rodriguez, this is from Fox News, President of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference. It's the world's largest Hispanic Christian organization. He's a senior pastor of a worship center in Sacramento. And he took a group of Hispanic pastors down to see firsthand these facilities and said it was drastically different than what he'd seen on TV. Quote, I read the reports, saw the news clips. I just wanted to see what was actually happening in order to better enable our efforts to find a fair and a just solution to our broken immigration system. To my surprise, I saw something drastically different from the stories I've been hearing in our national discourse. Even as a veteran of immigration advocacy in the U.S., I was shocked at the misinformation of the crisis at the border. We found no soil diapers, no deplorable conditions, no lack of basic necessities. He said some of the people who worked there told them that the negative coverage originated from people who never toured the areas of the facility, and speculated they might have had political motivations. Yeah, they were lawyers who are suing. It's basically hearsay that they're doing. So the pastor said they left in courage. And they felt like there was a good commitment from the American Border Patrol and immigration officers. The pastor said, many of whom are Latinos, by the way. He went on to say one Border Patrol agent was emotional with him and said this, Pastor Sam, what they're saying about us is completely false. We care about these kids and have a passion for our calling. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They actually care. And then there's this one. Rafael Bernal uh, reporting, U.S. authorities closed an international border bridge in El Paso, Texas, early Monday. Why? Central American and Cuban migrants were protesting on the Mexican side and they started chanting, Vamos a cruzar! Vamos a cruzar! That means we're going to cross. We are going to cross. So they shut the bridge at about 2 a.m. They were about 250 Cuban and Salvadoran migrants. Ma- Mexican National Guard was there but did nothing about it. So we had to shut it down. But there's no crisis on the border. Don't worry. Everything's fine. And then this is, I found this really interesting. 
the newly elected president of El Salvador came out and, and, and talked about the father and daughter who drowned trying to cross the Rio Grande, remember? The ones that were that were coming for economic benefits, according to the widow, which really is not what asylum is supposed to be. But here's what President Nayib Bukele said. He was elected last month. He says the blame for their deaths. Oh, he's going to blame Trump, isn't he? No. Well, he's going to blame America at least, right? No. I'm going to blame the Republicans, right? No. He said the blame for the father and the daughter's death rests with Salvadoran officials. <gasps> what? Yeah. He says, listen, people don't flee their homes because they want to. People flee their homes because they feel they have to. Why? Because they don't have a job. Because they're being threatened by gangs. Because they don't have basic things like water, education, and health. We can blame any other country, but what about our blame? What country did they flee? Did they flee the United States? They fled El Salvador. They fled our country. It is our fault. Wow. Finally, somebody said it. Somebody who was actually in the other country said it. Yeah, they're not fleeing America. They're fleeing your country. What are you doing about it to fix it? Great piece by the president of El Salvador. Good for him. And I'll give you that story about Mexico admitting some people are trying to buy children to cross. 844-DIG-CHAD gets you on board. My name's Greg Knapp. In for Chad Benson on The Chad Benson Show. My name's Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. 844-DIG-CHAD gets you into the program. 844-DIG-CHAD. You can find out more about me, GregoryBKnapp.com. You can find my podcast on Apple Podcasts. Just type in Gregory Knapp. That's K-N-A-P-P. And I appreciate you giving that a little listen. It's not about politics. It's called Find Your Purpose, Live Your Passion. So we're talking about what's been going on with the illegal immigration crisis. And the last thing I wanted to hit the Daily Wire, Seattle Times, the New York Times, they all have some little different part of the story. And Jazz Shaw was able to pull those together. I wanted to give him credit because it's showing that Mexico is now admitting that some of the illegal aliens are trying to buy children to cross the border. Wait, they're, what? Yeah, you heard me. To buy children. Mexican officials have admitted this has been going on for some time. They've been warning women in border towns and cities to keep their children under a close watch because migrants have been offering to buy their kids. In fact, the New York Times said between September of 2016 and August of 2017, there were 46 cases of bogus family claims. In other words, these are my children, and they weren't. 46 cases. Well, that's not very many. 46 children who shouldn't have been there, taken from their families. And then, in just five months, between September 2018 and January 2019, 191 cases of bogus family claims. That's a 315% increase. Why? Because we are incentivizing it. When you tell people, if you bring a child, we cannot hold you more than 20 days, and we will then release you into the United States of America, we're essentially telling them, if you bring a child, you're in. Come by yourself, we'll turn you right away. Or we'll hold you in jail and then turn you away. But if you come with a kid, we can only hold you in a detention center for 20 days at the most, and then we're going to release you. We're incentivizing it. That is not compassion. We should not be incentivizing that. What do you think? Oh, and we were talking about this yesterday, and we have the update now. Told you what happened in Portland. There was a rally by the so-called Proud Boys. The Antifa people wanted to co uh, protest against that. No problem so far. Everybody has the right to protest and counter protest whatever they want to do. Andy No is a conservative journalist. He also happens to be gay and half Vietnamese. So normally if somebody like this was attacked, most people on the left would come running to his defense. You would think most people would come running to your defense. I don't care whether you're gay, straight, white, black, polka dot or purple. People should not be assaulting you, and I will stand up for you no matter what. But because this guy's conservative, that's all they need to know. And very few. The only presidential candidate on the Democrat side that said a thing about this so far is Andrew Yang. The mayor of Portland seemed to have told his police to, you know, kind of stand down on what Antifa's been doing. And that's why Antifa's been going crazy in Portland. 
We'll get to the mayor in a second. But Andy No is simply there trying to report on what Antifa was doing. And he's got his cameras rolling. And he has written some things that Antifa doesn't like. So Antifa sees who he is. They see he's got a camera going, and they go after him. Now, remember, though, there have been multiple journalists attacked by Antifa. Some of them for just plain old mainstream um, left-leaning news organizations. So this is not the first time this has happened with Antifa. I don't even know if they knew who this guy was. They just saw that he was filming them, and they didn't like it. So they start attacking him. Yeah, they're throwing milkshakes on him. They're also throwing milkshakes with quick, dry cement in them. They're also throwing other objects, including eggs at him. They're kicking him. They're punching him. They're beating him. And he ends up going to the hospital with a brain bleed. Well, he was on with Tucker Carlson last night. Now, this is a little long, but I, and you can't see his bruised up face, but I just wanted you to hear from Andy No himself on exactly what happened to him at that Antifa beat down. Greg, you're sitting here talking about this before we play this clip, which is a little bit lengthy. Can you just yes. reset for our listeners what Antifa stands for, who they are as a group? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Antifa, if, you, if you're not familiar with them, that stands for anti-fascist. That's what they claim to be. They wear black masks and black clothing. Why? Because they don't want to be caught vandalizing and beating people up. And what they believe is, hey, um, we are using physical violence as defense, but, but these people didn't hit you. Oh, no, no. We don't have to wait for you to hit us to defend ourselves. We're defending ourselves from what you're going to do, and we're defending ourselves from your psychological violence and your verbal violence because of your horrible fascist beliefs. How do you define fascist beliefs? Well, obviously, if you're a Trump supporter, you're a fascist. And obviously, if you're for lower taxes and less government and, and what America is for right now, you're a fascist. Whatever they define it. And that's who Antifa is. It's a mob, is really what they are. So here's Andy No explaining what happened. Cut four. On Saturday, documenting this protest that was organized by Antifa and its allies, we were a literal stone's throw away from Portland's most important institutions of the rule of law, the courthouses, um, the sheriff's office, the central police precinct, while hearing people chant, no hate, no fear, right. I'm suddenly bashed on the back of my head from behind. Mm -hmm. And from there, I've, I'm a very passive person. I've never been in a fight. It took me a few seconds to realize that I was actually even hitting my head. When I realized what was happening, it was too late. Um, a mob of people, all dressed in black and wearing masks, started beating me with their fists, and some of them used objects to hit me. I don't know how many people were involved. It They're playing the seems video like behind five, it. 10, 15, or 20. It could have been that many. Um, they beat me so much that I lost control of my GoPro camera that I was holding, which was then stolen from me. And when I thought it was over, I was wrong. Um, I put my arms up to try to shield my face as well as to signal to them that I was surrendering and that I He's just trying to get out of there. Uh, wasn't there to fight. But that really signaled to them to be more aggressive. So then they started dumping what I believe were milkshakes and eggs, throwing it at my face, which blinded me so I couldn't see. And Remember, no I was hate, no kick some more, to. punch some more. And all this time I kept thinking, where are the police? I could Good still question. see the Monoma County Justice Center in front of me, but no police ever arrived. I eventually stumbled away, bleeding, um, across the park, and I lost my balance, so I sat down on the ground in front of the courthouse. And from there, a medic SWAT team informed me that in order to get an ambulance to be taken to a hospital, I would have to walk to the police precinct. In other words, walk back in the direction of the demonstrators who just attacked me. Oh, well, that's great. Later that night, after Arriving in the emergency room, I had a CT scan, which confirmed that there that I was diagnosed with um, 
a brain hemorrhage. That's Andy No explaining what happened on Tucker Carlson's show, and he's now saying that he's having some cognitive issues. He's calling them cognitive hiccups because of the attacks to his brain and his head. These, these are cowards who are attacking someone simply because he's a journalist and they don't like the fact that they're being uh, videotaped. There, there's no law in Portland against demonstrating with masks on. I think we need to make that a law. You should not be allowed to protest and obscure your identity because what we are doing is allowing mobs to rule. And we have mayors like this Mayor Wheeler in Portland who, by all accounts, is essentially telling his police to just let it go. Just let it go. Now he's come out with tweets saying, no, 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 that's not. Well, then why aren't the police there? He's right across from the police station. Why aren't they helping? Why haven't they been stepping in? They did step in. They told because him to go walk backwards in the same. they told not to. <laughs> they told him to walk backwards. Right? And then, yeah, and then they come and tell him, well, you know, you got to walk back over there in order to get the, the ambulance going. Right? So what, what, did, what did the mayor say? Listen to these tweets. Mayor Ted Wheeler tweets out, Portland has always been a beacon of free speech. We are proud of that history. But in the last couple of years, some have increasingly used their opportunity to exercise their First Amendment rights as an opportunity to incite violence. Some have. Some have. Tell me who these people are in Portland who have incited violence with their First Amendment right. Because so far all I'm seeing is Antifa. Over the weekend, some chose to engage in violence in Portland. Really, some. Why won't he say the word Antifa? Some chose to engage in violence in Portland, which is unacceptable and will not be tolerated. We stand against all forms of violence, dash, regardless of someone's political leanings. Okay, now wait a second. Two ways you can read that. One is he's saying, hey, hey, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're certainly not going to discriminate on political leanings. We take care of everybody. But on the other hand, you could read that as, hey, listen, we know that guy was a whack job, but, you know, you can't really even beat him, okay? So just you know, lighten up because we might have to do something about it. Portland police officers have the unenviable task of keeping the peace. Isn't that what they signed up for? Keep the peace? I mean, they're peace officers. It's a difficult job and hard decisions are made in real time. I agree. But shouldn't the decision always be to protect somebody who's being beaten? While we continue to learn more about what transpired over the weekend, we will keep you informed. We will do everything we can to make sure that those who have committed violence are held accountable. Really? Like what? What are you actually going to do? Because there's video of it. And this is not the first time that it's happened. What are you going to do about it? Ted Cruz, as I told you yesterday, says to federal law enforcement, investigate and bring legal action against the mayor who has, for political reasons, ordered his police officers to let citizens be attacked by domestic terrorists. And then we have Ambassador Rick Grenell tweeting this out. This was a premeditated attack on someone because intolerant radicals don't like that Andy happens to be gay, Asian, and conservative. They targeted him publicly before the protest. Mayor at Ted Wheeler knew this was coming. The people of Oregon must speak up today. I say it wasn't the first time that this has happened with Antifa. It, it, it's it's going to continue to happen, and it's going to get worse if we don't get a handle on this. How can anyone, I don't care whether you're far left, far right, in the middle, conservative, liberal, libertarian, socialist, communist, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whatever, how can anybody think this is okay and that this is what's supposed to happen in the United States of America? Really, how can anybody think that that's okay? 844-DIG-CHAD gets you on board. 844-DIG-CHAD. You've heard about secondhand smoking, but now there's secondhand something else that we're being told is a big crisis in America. I'll get that to you in just a second. My name's Greg Knapp. I'm filling in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. Oh boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. And my name is Greg Knapp. I'm in for Chad on the Chad Benson Show. You can jump into 844-DIG-CHAD. You can go online to thechadshow.com and Twitter is at Chad Benson Show. 
Find out more about me, gregorybnapp.com. i got the new podcast on Apple Podcasts. Type in Gregory Knapp, K-N-A-P-P, and you'll be right there. Find Your Purpose, Live Your Passion is the name of that one. AOC saying that Border Patrol agents told these women to drink out of the toilet. The Border Patrol is pushing back hard on this now. As the day has been moving on, they've been saying, no, no, no. We told you about the toilet and the sink are attached like in any municipal facility, like a jail. And they, well, the one in the room I was in didn't work. So they were told to drink out of the toilet. No, we don't tell people to drink out of the toilet. So now it's a back and forth here on who you believe and who has credibility or not. She didn't take the tour, by the way. And she said an awful lot of things that destroyed her credibility, but we'll see how this all plays out. Meanwhile, uh, there was a story that Vice President Pence was leaving on his airplane and then he had to turn around quickly and there was something wrong with the airplane. And now what we're getting from the AP is that Vice President Pence canceled a planned trip to New Hampshire, but they have not said exactly why. Simply, quote, something came up and the VP needed to be in D.C., There is no cause for alarm. Another senior official said the issue was not national security related. Another said it was not related to any kind of health issue impacting Pence or President Trump. And that President, excuse me, Vice President Pence's plane never took off and he returned to the White House to meet with President Trump. And we'll see where that story goes. But so uh, a lot of different reporting coming out to this final report so far from the AP as a final report. The most updated report that we have at this moment is a better way to put it. Okay, so it used to be secondhand smoking. Look out, secondhand smoking is going to kill us all. And now we're being told, forget about secondhand smoking. Now it's secondhand drinking. Secondhand drinking, that sounds really gross. No, it's not, it's not like that. What they're saying is people who are drunk around you can cause you problems. Yeah, well, that's secondhand drinking. No, it's called a drunk. Well, yeah, but he could he could have problems. I mean, what if what if a drunk person hits you with a car? Oh, you're absolutely right. What if what if a drunk person is your dad and he beats you up? Okay. What if uh, drunkenness causes marital domestic abuse? It causes financial problems. I totally agree. Drinking too much can cause all kinds of problems. One hundred percent agree with you. I just don't know why we have to call it secondhand drinking. Why don't we simply just call it? the impacts of somebody drinking too much. But eh, this makes it so that I guess more people pay attention. It's a new study published in the Journal of Studies on Alcohol and Drugs. Really, essentially all this is is another way to talk about how alcohol can really impact your life even if you're not drinking. So subject were asked, do you experience any of these 10 types of harms caused by someone who has been drinking alcohol in the last 12 months. And so they looked at things like traffic accidents, physical abuse, marital problems, property damage, financial issues. CNN reporting on this that the current research is funded by the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. And they're trying to provide insight for potential alcohol control policies. Oh, here we go. So since there's a problem here, and there is a problem, people who drink too much cause problems. So what's the solution? Get the government involved. How? Well, some of their ideas are taxation and pricing. Wait, well, wait a second. So everybody who buys alcohol is going to have to pay more? Well, yeah, alcohol is the problem. But wait a second. What if you just have a couple drinks on the weekend and maybe some wine with dinner and you, you don't get drunk and cause all these problems? Do you still have to pay more? Well, of course, everybody does. How in the world is that a fair uh excuse me who said life was fair well obviously it's not for people like us who actually pay the taxes so charging all of us more punishing all of us for the people who drink too much is the answer okay hang on a second you know there didn't used to be very much tax at all on alcohol if you go back in time in this country and then we started adding what they call the sin taxes We started adding a little bit more on beer, a little bit more on wine, a little bit more on the hard alcohol. Have we had a decrease in these problems with alcohol because of those taxes? Is there any evidence that shows that has happened? Well, no, not really. Well, then we're going to do it some more because, you know, we've always done it this way. And the real thing we're going to get here is more tax money. So, I mean, that's what we really care about. 
I mean, do we have any evidence that as we increase taxes, we have helped with the alcohol problems in this country? No. But we're going to go ahead and do it anyway because, after all, more taxes is always a solution if you're the government. I mean, if every problem looks like a nail, then every solution is going to be the hammer. Oh, by the way, we're also getting to the point where artificial intelligence is going to help tell police when suspects are lying to them. We're getting close to Minority Report with all this stuff. So are we going to make sure these things really work first? Because, I mean, computers never make mistakes. That's going to be great. What are you in for? AI said I'm lying. 